one which says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not cause any of his ayat any of his signs to be forgotten he substitutes it with something better or similar now based on this verse there are many scholars who have propounded the theory of abrogation Nas and Mansuk people will say what is Dr. Zakhine talking about no, that no verses contradict the Quran says the verse will not contradict it will not contradict any scholar says anything I am not bothered Allah is the highest number one now if you read the verse of the Quran you can analyze the verse of the Quran in two ways one way is that the ayahs talking in the Quran are referring to the earlier scriptures maybe Torah maybe Injil so Allah says I do not cause any of the ayahs the signs of Allah the previous verses of the previous revelations to be forgotten but substituted with something better or similar something better and similar is the Quran now if you agree that the ayat mentioned in the verse is ayat of the Quran then too I have an answer it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed one verse of the Quran what was relevant for that time and after that he revealed another verse but that verse is not contradicting it is giving more information and the two verses given by the sister of Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 15 and Surah Nur chapter number 24 verse number 2 though she hasn't mentioned the translation and by Allah's grace I know the translation of these verses not the Mahafadul Quran this is all training it's not Mahafadul Quran it is practice that I know what questions are going to come to me so we know the verses mashallah it's very easy it's not difficult you tell the verses and even our children mashallah do the same Alhamdulillah Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 15 says that if anyone is caught in fornication if any woman is caught in fornication then keep her in custody in house arrest like seclude her until she dies or Allah ordained something else and then Surah Nur chapter number 24 verse number 2 says that as for the fornicator person who commits fornication give them punishment of 100 lashes now people will think is there a contradiction if the first Quranic verse of Surah Nisa chapter 4 15 said that put the woman in house arrest and a full stop then Surah Nur of 100 lashes would contradict it says that keep them in house until they die or until Allah gives something else now for this Allah has given two options in the Quran for a fornicator there's 100 lashes and in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari for the adulterer the punishment is thrown into death so this verse of the Quran does say that Allah will give some other punishment later on if that part wasn't there there would have been a contradiction so there's no contradiction it says that this punishment is temporary later on Allah will reveal something else similarly there are scholars who have written that there are thousand verses contradicting some scholars then came to 500 Suthi I think came down to 22 another scholar came down to 5 I have verified those 22 and 5 also I have answered those also Alhamdulillah and one of them is this what we realize in Mansuk and Nask what happens that Allah in some prohibitions he has brought in stages and the best example I give is of alcohol the first verse to be revealed regarding alcohol is Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 219 where Allah says in intoxicants there is loss as well as profit the loss is more than profit this verse of the Quran does not prohibit alcohol it only says in intoxicants there is loss and profit the loss is more than profit the next verse to be revealed of prohibition was Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 43 which says that do not pray with your mind befogged when you are intoxicated do not pray that means it is a higher degree now previously it did not say it was haram it only gave you guidance in intoxicants there is loss and profit loss is more than profit next verse says do not pray with your mind before when you are intoxicated you can't pray now since a Muslim has to pray five times a day indirectly he can't have intoxicants the full day in night option is there not it saying you should have the final prohibition came in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 90 which says Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu O you believe innam al khamru al maisuru most certainly intoxicated than gambling wal anzabu al azlamu dedication of stone, divination of arrows rich summan amili shaitan these are certain handiwork first anibu lalukum tuflihun abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper here the final prohibition came now when this verse was revealed barrels 
of alcohol intoxicants thrown on the streets of Medina never to be filled again. Then the final haram came. Now if you analyze, many people say that the last verse of Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 90 has overruled Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 219. It's contradicting. It's not contradicting. It is giving more information. The first verse only told you there is loss and profit. Loss is more. Even today the verse is applicable. That verse is even correct today. Even in intoxicants today there is loss and profit. We as medical doctors know there is profit. But the loss is more than profit. The next verse says don't pray when you are intoxicated. Even today that is applicable. Today we cannot pray when you are intoxicated. But the last final prohibition doesn't contradict. It encompasses. For example, I say that I live in UK. Fine. Then next day I say, I live in London. Third day I say, I live in Harrow. A moment I say Harrow, London and UK is understood. But my first answer, I live in UK, was a general answer. Then more specific, I live in London. When I say I live in Harrow, it is more specific. It's not contradicting my first answer. So the last prohibition that the alcohol is prohibited is not contradicting that in intoxicants there is loss and profit. It is yet there. It's not contradicting Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 43 that you cannot pray when your mind is befogged, when you're intoxicated. So this means there is more information. The last verse of the Quran, if you follow that, the earlier two is automatically followed. It's understood. So therefore, according to me and according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is not a single contradiction in the Quran. If there were any contradiction, this book cannot be the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I disagree with anyone. Let him be the greatest scholar in the world. And I've challenged anyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, to point out a single contradiction in the Quran. They will never do it and never will be able to do it.